Uh, Debbie, let's come back onto the issue of antimicrobial resistance. Yes, let's. And apologies again that I'm sitting in the dark. Um, but people ask me a lot, what is coming next? What do I think is coming next? Is it avian flu? Is it this? Is it that? Is it whatever it is? Antimicrobial resistance, according to the WHO, is one of the top global emerging threats fact. Now, this is a really big subject, and it's a subject that I'm going to be doing a one-off special with Cheryl Granger, um, especially on antimicrobial resistance. Um, but I think that it could be a dark winter ahead. Um, what have they got planned for us? Well, I'll just say hashtag walking pneumonia. Keep an eye out for walking pneumonia. There's going to be more to come. But is this an attack on the gut biome? Now, I've got a lot to get through. So it's going to be slides fairly quickly. So bear with me because this is just an overview of a huge, huge subject. So let's start off with Antibiotic Guardian. And now you're going to have to get well soon without antibiotics. Now, just note that without antibiotics. So where are we going to go from there? Well, according to King's, uh, today we're living in an age where antimicrobials could, on average, put 20 years on your life if we save antibiotics. Now, this paper came out in 2017, but it's a big agenda for Tedros and the WHO. Let's listen to what Tedros says about antimicrobial resistance. Antimicrobial resistance, or AMR, threatens to send us back to a time whenever minor infections were untreatable. Already, AMR contributes to nearly 5 million deaths every year. These drug-resistant infections are driven by the misuse and overuse of antimicrobials in both humans and animals. World AMR Awareness Week is an opportunity to draw attention to what all of us can do. This means clean water, sanitation and hygiene, and infection prevention and control in health facilities. It means vaccines for children, older people, and others most at risk. It means responsible use of antimicrobials in all sectors, and it means a One Health approach that recognizes the links between the health of humans, animals, and our environment. Stopping AMR is a shared responsibility. Take note, it's a shared responsibility. So in September, this September 2024, is a United Nations General Assembly high-level meeting on AMR. Now, this is going to be a massive meeting and it's going to coincide with a lot of social messaging that you're going to hear. When you go further into that document, you can see the roadmap. So this all started in 2014 and here we are in 2024 waiting for the UN General Assembly meeting. But they clearly have called it now a political declaration, a major milestone for increased political action. So antimicrobial resistance has become a political football. And one more slide on from that, you can see that we've got the private-public partnership um, also mentioned there. And at the bottom, you'll see that the UK launches world's first substitute for anti antibiotic supply. And of course, what have we got in the UK? But we've got the Fleming Centre and we featured the Fleming Centre Last week, this is at St. Mary's Hospital Paddington, and this is going to be a centre designed for the next five years uh, to fight antimicrobial resistance. Now, this is also a Labour Party campaign. <laughs> you know, this is a big political football. So here you can see on Labour list, antimicrobial resistance, the biggest health challenge of our time. So again, a political football I want you to look at uh, the government's documents, though, because they've got a vision and uh, their vision is not impressive. This document was published in 2019. And what it says is that one in three patients in hospitals in England are on an antibiotic at any one time. And one in three individuals in England takes at least one course of antibiotics every year. The report also goes on to talk about a collaborative future. Now, this collaborative future is with the same old names that we're used to. The research community, the United Nations, the European Union, G7, G20. We're looking at industry, private sector. But take note, 
we're looking at the patients, the public, and in particular, we're looking at animal owners. So just take note. But what have we got to do? We've got to be ready, willing, and engaged because this is going to be up to us, everybody. We have got to do our duty. We have got to virtue signal to say that we won't use antibiotics if we don't need to or when we don't need to. So the Global AMR Innovation Fund, otherwise known as GAMRIF, is uh, to support early stage innovative research in underfunded areas of antimicrobial resistance. Now, this, again, is a private public partnership working with research organizations, governments and industry. And, and it's also targeting the one health approach. But who runs this? So there are two two people that I want to highlight to run this in particular. There's lots of them, but we're just for time going to keep it to two. Christopher Edgerton Warburton is the chair of the expert advisory group and will represent GAMRIF internationally. And we've got Professor Keith Klugman there from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So let's have a quick look at those two people. And there you can see Christopher Edgerton Warburton of Lion's Head. And if you look a bit further, you can see that he spent 14 years at Goldman Sachs. So follow the money. And then very quickly on to Keith Klugman, Professor Keith Klugman at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Now, interestingly, he specializes in pneumonia, as does Professor Graham Cook, chair of the MHRA board. They are looking specifically at pneumonia. So walking pneumonia and pneumonia for winter 2024, I think we should be looking at. But let's not forget the UK has our very own Special Envoy for Antimicrobial Resistance, Dame Sally Davis. We have shown this before, but let's just remind ourselves of a quick piece of video from her very good self. We all know that without diagnostics, current and new antibiotics will be incorrectly prescribed and overused. That'll speed up the development of resistance and puts us all at increased risk. word there diagnostics because this is all about diagnostics this is about putting sticks up your nose and testing you for things but recently the government brought out this paper and this is a very very important paper please can i get everybody to go and have a look at this confronting antimicrobial resistance 2024 to 2029 let's go and look at a little bit further in because you'll see that what they've done is they've taken the lessons from covid and they're rolling them out now for antimicrobial resistance so engagement with industry, regulatory pathways, we'll come on to that in a minute, and innovations in vaccine technology, just to name but a few. And of course, we've got to be a good global partner. The UK has got to play its part in this. So we have to achieve the vision, and it's the public in the UK that have to become the good global partners. Going further on in the document, I just want you to take special notice of this, Several initiatives across the UK are in place to ensure that citizens know that water from their taps is safe to drink and that their sewage waste is being properly managed and treated. This includes regulation of water companies and monitoring of waterways. And so regulators and water companies will play a vital role in this area. Now we'll come on to a bit more about that in a minute, but also in the document, it refers to Port and Down. What it says about Port and Down is that it has a four bedded ward and isolation rooms with dedicated heating, ventilation, air conditioning, realistic water and drainage systems. What to look at? To look at antibiotic resistance, infections, and they're going to be looking through a number of transmission routes, uh, fomites, aerosols, pathogen, but also hospital water systems. I want you to take special note of hospital water systems. Could this be going forward what we're going to be looking at? It also mentions hospital laundry there too. And I have to say, I've been barking on about nurses' uniforms for a very long time. But you know, it affects the kids too, because we have to target the young, right? So courtesy of the UK HSA, here's eBug. And now we're going to be teaching three-year-olds, three to 16-year-olds, all about vaccines, all about antimicrobial resistance. 
and all about hygiene. And there is a lovely little video to go with that. Maybe we can look at it at uh, another week in the news, but they're definitely targeting the youngsters. And also in the paper is PACE. This is a £30 million programme over five years. There's your life. Uh, there's your five years again. Life Arc, Innovate, Medicines Discovery, Catapult. I'm sure Headley Reese will be very pleased to hear the word catapult. And this is going to strengthen the pipeline. So you're going to get some nice new antimicrobial drugs coming down the pipeline. But of course, the MHRA are involved and the paper does mention the MHRA and says that they're going to be responsible for regulation of all of these new drugs because it's very, very important. So let's go on to see the new group that the MHRA have appointed. And here they've got 1.8 million, courtesy of the Department of Health and Social Care, especially to look at how to fast track all these drugs coming down the pipeline. So let's go to the MHRA blog. I did tell you there was a lot and I'm trying to get through it as quickly as I can. So the MHRA are deeming antimicrobial resistance as a looming global health emergency. They also say that the unexpected potential solution to AMR could come in the form of a bacterial vaccine. Well, that's surprising, isn't it? So we're going to be treating antimicrobial resistance with vaccines. And we're going to be using novel needle-free delivery of vaccine candidates for things like group A and B strep. Also, you'll be pleased to know that the MHRA are involved in a transatlantic task force on antimicrobial resistance, and they want to identify um, solutions to the problem that hasn't yet happened as soon as possible. And uh, just to we are going to be finishing up, I promise you, but I just want to put out a warning because it seems to be that they're targeting pregnant mums, saying to pregnant mums, if you use antibiotics in pregnancy, this could affect your unborn baby. And here they're using seborrheic dermatitis as an example. So what have we got coming down the pipeline? Well, Oxford suggests we've got a novel triple drug combination effective against antibiotic resistant bacteria. And I've just put the academic paper for anybody that's interested to go and have a look at it. Uh, the triple combination of uh, meropenem, avibactam, and metallolactamase. None of it sounds good at all, but please go and look at that. Also, um, we've got mRNA vaccine platforms. Are they going to be the next solution? Well, yes, it looks as though they are. And one on from that on the conclusion, it says that mRNA vaccine platform could be a promising solution to the challenges currently encountered in AMR vaccine development, although the jury is still out. I'm sure the jury won't be out for long. Uh, Antibiotic Research UK, they're talking also about could mRNA vaccines protect us from antibiotic resistant infections? So what, what have we got to do? Well, we've all got to become antibiotic guardians. This was started in 2014, but they're going to ramp it up. And just note the, the names there, British Society for Antimicrobial Chemotherapy. Don't we all associate chemotherapy with cancer? However, now it's associated with antimicrobial resistance. And what are you going to do? Well, you're going to make a pledge. You have to make a pledge to the United Kingdom government, to the United Kingdom HSA, that you're going to be very good and you'll make better use of antibiotics and you'll help save antibiotics from becoming obsolete. And if you really want to go the full, the full mile, you can buy your very own antimicrobial lapel pin to show that you're virtue signaling. So that was a, a quick whew, run around, but there's so much more to come. Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk a bit more about this in Extra, Debbie, but I wanted to just get your comment on the main news about this comment uh, about uh, not using antibiotics when we don't need to. I don't believe there's anybody that doesn't that, that attempts to use antibiotics when they don't need to. They're, they're either fed them by their doctors um, you know, that's basically the reason. Uh, and, you know, bearing in mind the damage that an antibiotics do to the uh, gut microbiome, this isn't something that people do uh, as a matter of choice. They're not trying to buy them off the shelves like sweeties. They, they are handed them by the doctor uh, for uh, presumably medical reasons. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, this is an assault on our gut biome at the end of the day. And who says we're resistant to antibiotics? Are antibiotics being made, being manufactured a little bit less powerful so that they don't work in order for us to think that they don't work? 
there's a much bigger agenda here, Mike, and perhaps we'll talk about because behaviour is involved in this big time as well, nudging. So maybe we'll talk about it a bit more in extra. Um, okay, thank you, uh, Nigel.